I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumbrey here again for JoeBlow.com with another video edition of The Best Movie You Never Saw. And this week, we're taking a look at Best of the Best, starring Eric Roberts, James Earl Jones, Sally Kirkland, Philip Ree, and Chris Penn. Now, in this, a team of American martial artists, including single father Alex Grady, played by Roberts, are chosen to represent the United States in an international tournament, pitting them against Team Korea. Complicating things is the fact that the team's most skilled fighter, Tommy, played by Philip Ree, secretly plans to take his revenge against Team Korea leader Dae Han, played by his real-life brother Simon Ree, who years earlier killed his brother in a match. Now, in the late 80s, martial arts was firmly a part of the pop culture thanks to The Legend of Bruce Lee, The Karate Kid, and a never-ending slew of ninja movies from canon films. Schools opened up in virtually every mall across North America, and guys like Steven Seagal, Chuck Norris, and especially Jean-Claude Van Damme were household names, and the martial arts tournament movie was a popular video store genre, with classics of the genre including Kickboxer, Bloodsport, and to a lesser extent, movies like Blood Fist, and many, many more. Now, unlike many of these films, except perhaps the Van Damme movies, Best of the Best got a major theatrical release in North America, and with its PG-13 rating, it's clear the makers were looking for some mainstream success, something along the lines of The Karate Kid. But for whatever reason, Best of the Best just absolutely tanked theatrically, maybe due to the fact that it was coming out from a relatively new studio at the time called The Movie Group. It only grossed $1.7 million, although its home video and cable success was so massive that we even got a theatrically released sequel in 1992, and then two further direct-to-video sequels that are only very loosely related to the first two in the mid-90s. Now, everybody seemed to have a good time doing this film. Eric Roberts himself, who starred in something like a thousand movies, has said this was maybe the most fun physically I've ever had making movies. It was like boys camp. I got to go to work out the body every morning, then you'd go do the goju and get ready for the moves of the day, and then you'd go do the set and shoot karate movie. It ended up being a wonderful movie about triumph, and I'm very proud of the first film, Best of the Best. It's a really good movie. First, let me acknowledge the fact that to many of you reading this, Best of the Best is not particularly obscure. Sure, it was an absolute flop theatrically, but a generation of us grew up watching it, especially those of us who probably went into karate lessons as kids. I know that it was a movie that I watched over and over and over again growing up, but the kids today do not know best of the best. They simply don't. It's not really available on many of the streaming sites. It's kind of obscure because the lead actors are pretty obscure. Eric Roberts has something of a cult status, but he's not exactly someone like a Nicolas Cage or something like that. It's a cult favorite for action fans because of its constant cable play in the 90s, specifically on the channel TBS, and sure enough it was successful enough to spawn a modest franchise, yet I firmly believe that just as many readers out there have never even heard of this late 80s flick, which is a cut above many of the martial arts movies of the era. Now, it was written by Philip Ree, who also starred in the film, and he said it came from the heart. It's based on my story when I competed in 1980 against the Korean team, which is kind of strange because Philip Ree's brother actually plays the villain in this movie. So he's avenging the brother that got killed who's on camera with him? Oh, I don't know exactly. Maybe he had another brother? I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's, a, it's pretty dramatic. For one thing, though, best of the best is a lot more of a drama in the vein of something like The Karate Kid or Rocky than an all-out action flick, and I think that maybe disappointed some action fans when they were young. This isn't a Chuck Norris movie, and thank God it's not a Steven Seagal movie. It's not even really a Van Damme movie where Bloodsport and Kickboxer had him against these murderous adversaries that he had to destroy in the ring. This one, a lot of time is given to the personal lives of the athletes, with Eric Roberts the heart and soul of the film as injured fighter Alex Grady, who had to put his dreams on hold to raise his son as a single dad. One of the best subplots involves his son being injured in an accident and his choice to quit the team in order to be there with his kid, and you have to appreciate that the makers opted to hire a legitimate actor in Eric Roberts rather than a fighter to play the part. In his case, it pays off because he was in really good shape and he could reasonably approximate the on-screen action and actually seem like a credible fighter. That said, that decision to hire actors rather than martial artists backfires a bit when it comes to Chris Penn, who never ever convinces is literally one of the best martial artists in the country. Although, I guess he's fun in the part as the swaggering, somewhat racist, comic relief guy. Experience! 
And that's a white man's meal, Verge. Uh, it works, and Chris Penn, you know, I like him. I just don't know if I buy him in an action movie, or specifically a martial arts movie. What may surprise people, though, is the fact that Eric Roberts, despite his top billing, isn't actually the star. Rather, it's Philip Ree, who wasn't even on the video store cover when I was a kid. In fact, Sally Kirkland was on the video store cover, and I imagine that a lot of people hadn't really heard of her at the time, although she had been nominated for an Oscar, and James Earl Jones. I mean, they made it look like it was an Eric Roberts, James Earl Jones, Sally Kirkland action movie. Really, the two of them play supporting roles, and Philip Ree is the actual star, as Tommy. He gets the most brutal scrap, as well as the big arc with it playing out in a totally refreshing way as opposed to most 80s action flicks. I also appreciate the distinctly non-xenophobic vibe. While yes, for much of the film, Team Korea is presented as this feared enemy, when it comes down to the tournament itself, they prove to be not all that different from our American heroes, and the ending is one of the best guy cry moments ever, along with that classic tearjerker, Brian song. I love Brian Piccolo. And I'd like all of you to love him too. Well, a bit cheesy in that distinct 80s way, meaning lots of scenes of Ray riding around on his motorcycle with a power ballad playing in the background and a long montage at the beginning featuring Eric Roberts working as a welder in a body shop with a hard rockin' song playing in the background. It's still a major cut above for the genre. Now is the hour for you to stop. Roberts was at his peak in this era, having come off three Golden Globe nominations for King of the Gypsies, Star 80, and The Amazing Runaway Train, as well as an Oscar nod for Runaway Train, although he probably should have been nominated and in fact should have won for Bob Fosse's Star 80. It's the fact that he played such a scummy character, people weren't really able to tell that, well, he was actually just acting. Also, check out Pope of Greenwich Village opposite Mickey Rourke. That's a damn good movie, too. Eric Roberts puts all of his heart into this part, and while he's maybe a bit too over the top in his emoting, in that I don't think there's ever been an action star that's cried on screen as much as he does here. It's Daddy. Oh. Daddy's here. I still love him in the part, and Ree also should have gotten a lot more roles. He's a martial artist, but you know what, he's pretty damn good as an actor. Now, some are probably going to scoff at the idea of James Earl Jones as a martial arts coach because, I mean, it looks like he couldn't possibly throw a kick. Although, to be fair, James Earl Jones in the 70s was actually a pretty badass boxer, which you could see in The Great White Hope. He was just the man as far as authority figures went in the 1980s, so even though he doesn't look necessarily like a martial artist, you accept him. And his presence on the DVD cover, in fact, probably did help this one infiltrate pop culture to some degree, because he was kind of the man in this era. The best scene in this movie, or at least the signature scene for best of the best, is when Eric Roberts is having a scrap with probably the second most badass bad guy in the film, and he pops his shoulder. Now, when a hero dislocates his shoulder in an action movie of this era, it's usually pretty dramatic. I mean, think of Mel Gibson as Riggs popping it back in himself. <laughs> now, Mel Gibson has some pretty strong competition in Eric Roberts here as far as it goes to popping bones back into their sockets. And I love it when he gets Philip Ree, or rather Tommy, to pop it back in and just keep saying over and over again, pop it, Tommy, pop it, pop it. Do it! Do it! Do it! Say pop it Tommy to any legitimate action fan of a certain age and 100% they're gonna know what you're talking about. Now best of the best can actually be a little bit tricky to find, but it's out there on DVD Blu-ray if you're looking for it, although it doesn't seem to be available digitally at all. I looked for it on Amazon Prime, on Tubi TV, on Netflix, on iTunes, on Google Play, couldn't find it anywhere. So it takes a little bit of searching for it, although it's available if you know where to look, if you know what I mean. Now, Best of the Best is a prime serving of 80s cheese with the added benefit that, in addition to hitting all the familiar beats of the genre that you'd expect, it has a heart beneath its brawny exterior, and I found it quite inspiring as a kid, and it's well worth a watch or a revisit. And also, to this day, I have never seen a man cry as much as Eric Roberts does in this movie. For JoeBlow.com, I'm Chris Bumbray. Today, you have a chance to be the best martial artists in the world. It's up to you. If you give everything you've got, everything, with all your heart, you'll be winners. That I promise you. You can be the best of the best.